Hi, this is Steve and welcome to Pixelbump.com. This week we have a great new tutorial on using Espresso to move an object along a surface and to animate procedurally. If you watched our tutorial a few weeks ago on rope rigging with Espresso, you saw how that it adds serious amounts of animation power to Cinema 4D. And this week what I want to do is show how to animate an object along the surface of another and have it follow the contours of the landscape. So here's what we're going to recreate. We've got our little tank bot here and he's rolling down the surface of this mountain. And we've got our little animated tr tank treads happening. And it's all been done very simply and cleanly with two keyframes. I am dead serious, there are two keyframes on this animation. Everything else you're seeing is happening through the power of Expresso. And not a crazy setup either. This one's going to be pretty easy to do, and let's dig into it. So, as you can see, we've got our landscape here, and if we zoom in, we've got our little tank bot. Here he is, he's very cute. And he's got, if we look here, some cloner objects for his treads, and the treads are just made out of one little section that are placed along a spline and cloned out. And we can see here that if we want to move the offset on them, they will animate really nicely. But if we were to try to take this guy as he is and bring him down to the surface and then kind of move him along, we would see we'd have a kind of a hard time animating him. And we could try to do this with something like a spline path and project it down onto the geometry, but, but then you lock yourself into a single path. And we want to leave this open to make any animation we want. So let's take a look at how we can do that using Expresso. So the first thing I need to do is create a new null here. And I'm going to call this my Expresso Null. There we go. And we're going to go over to Cinema 4D and add an Expresso tag to it. And that will bring up my Expresso editor, which has nothing in it. And I know how daunting this can be, but it's, like I said, a very simple setup. It's going to introduce you to a couple of new nodes that we didn't talk about when we did rigging and hopefully it'll just give you a little more information about how Expresso works if it's something you're not used to. So to be able to move it across the landscape, the first thing we'll need is to bring in the landscape. That's for sure. And we're going to use something called the Ray Collision node. And what this does is it uses two objects to find a point on a piece of geometry. So if I were to go to my side view here, and I have a point up here and a point down here, and they're sitting at zero, zero, it will find the point on the mesh that is at that zero, zero, zero point right here. And then it's gonna be able to give us a result back. So we have our ray point one, ray point two, which would be our two different objects. And then it's gonna be able to tell us where that collision is happening or where the hit position is, which is actually what we're gonna end up needing. So to get those two objects, we can use just about anything. We can use a piece of geometry. I prefer for this type of stuff to use nulls. So I'm gonna come in here and call this tank body ray one. And I'm gonna duplicate that and call this ray two. And then I'm just gonna come in and change them over to circles. And just to make them a little easier to see, I'm going to change their color over to a bright green. There we go. So there we go, we can see them real easily. Now we'll go ahead and take our first null, bring it way, way up, and our second null and bring it way, way down. That way, no matter where it is on the geometry, we'll be able to get that position real easily. And I'm going to take my two nulls and I'm going to put them underneath the tankbot geo node here, or the tankbot geo null. There we go. We got ray one, ray two. I'm going to go ahead 
and bring those two guys over to Expresso. And we'll pull them out a little bit so we can see them. And we're gonna look at our ray point here and we're gonna see that we need to input vectors into these two parts. So that means we're gonna use our positions of our nulls. So we'll go down to coordinates, global position, and we'll just grab the global position. We don't need to worry about X, Y, or Z because if we get them all together, it is also a vector. So I'm gonna grab my global position for both of those, plug one into ray one, one into ray two, and then the landscape is going to be the object that they're dealing with. So I'll plug the object into the ray collision. Now, we're not quite there yet because we need to know what we want to output. So we want to output the position that they're in. And like we looked before here, we see that there's a hit position. So we can click hit position and add that to our outputs. And then we're going to take our tankbot mover node null and we're going to drop that into Expresso and we're going to feed in the global position. Again, we got a vector coming out and we're going to put a vector in. So we're going to go vector to vector and then I'm going to move it over and nothing happened. Uh oh, that doesn't seem right. Well, what we need to do is come over to Ray Collision, click on it, and click off test only. Let me move the Expresso window out of the way because you'll see when I click off test only, it's going to snap down. And if I grab my Tankbot mover, you can see he's starting to roll right along that surface. Let me pull out here. And you can see now, here he goes up. And all I'm doing is moving his position in X and Z, but you can see him also moving in Y to reflect the position of the landscape. So let's go ahead and move him back to zero here. And we're gonna see a bit of a problem. He's moving in the right position, but there's no pitch to it. There's no rotation. He's not starting to turn up like you would want him to if he's going uphill or down as if he's going downhill. Now we can just kind of rotate him, but again, we'd have to start rotating a lot. And that's not gonna be a lot of fun. So how can we solve that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and use a very similar setup, but I'm going to create a secondary null and I'm gonna call this the Tankbot target. And I'm going to go ahead and take Tankbot target, Ray 1, and Tankbot target, Ray 2. And let's go ahead and make sure that all of these guys are in the same place. So again, we've got our target, and we want that to be right down here with our Tankbot. And then these are right under, up again, above and beneath our tank bot target, our two rays. So if we look at it here in the side, we can see that we've got a little target here right in front. So let's go ahead and move it just in front of our tank bot. And we'll bring over our Expresso window. And we're gonna copy and paste that entire setup Come on. And we're gonna do a little bit of swapping here. So we want to take, let's just disconnect that position again so it doesn't snap out. But we're gonna take our ray one and change it here. And we're gonna drag and drop ray two over the number two here. So those have been updated to tank target instead of tank body. So those are now feeding in their positions to the ray collision. And we wanna take the tank bot target and swap that over. And if we hook this back up, just to match that position there. So now, if I move these guys together, you can watch this little dot here, or let's go ahead and make that a square. Where's a, 
there we go, rectangle. And we'll go ahead and give it a color, maybe bright red. And now we'll be able to see very clearly that it's moving along with the tank bot. And it's giving us a bit of a position just before the tank bot has it. So if we return this to zero again, the next thing I want to do is add a target, just a plain old Cinema 4D target to my TankBot Geo. And the target object is going to be the TankBot target. And now you'll see, here he goes. Now he's moving right along that surface. And we can go ahead and have him now move anywhere on the surface we want him to go. And you can see now it's doing all of the pitch animation exactly as we want it. And if you find that your object is not sliding exactly on top of the landscape, that's why I have a two null setup here. So I can come in, grab my, tar my uh, geo node, I can turn on the access movement and I can just slide it. So now all I have to do is find a path I want him to move along. So if we're going to repeat what we've done before, I'm just going to slide my mover over here. And let's see, make sure this is going to be over the top of that ridge, which it looks like that's pretty close. Let's move it over a little more. There we go. Although now our tank bot is actually facing the wrong direction again. So I'll just slide that target forward until it's where I want it to be. And there, now he's facing the right direction. So I'll just start him back here. And my X, Y, and Z for the mover, I will set a keyframe. I'll set an end keyframe. And I'll move him up, set the keyframe. And there we go, those are our two keyframes. And now I'm gonna get all that animation completely for free, just out of Expresso. Let's go ahead and scrub through here, and you can see that's looking much better. Much nicer. Now the next thing we want to do is come in here and look and it's really nice animation, but those tank treads aren't moving. And again, I could add in some extra keyframes, but with a quick Espresso setup, I'm not gonna have to. And no matter where I turn that robot or how far I make it move, it's always going to obey those key, the keyframe I set just on this one master null. And because I've used that cloner setup, again, this is gonna be really, really easy to do. So I'm gonna wanna take my tank bot mover here we go. And I'm going to want to output right now its Z position. I'm moving it in Z. If I grab my mover, you'll see he's moving in the Z axis. So I'm going to want that Z position. And then I'm going to want to just take that Z position and I'm going to take my two cloner objects. And we already looked that we want to offset the animation. And if we look in our object properties, you're seeing we have offset. So let's add offset to the inputs of our two cloner objects. And what, let's see what happens if we just input the straight Z position. So I'm gonna scrub back, bring it forward, and you can see it's moving but it's moving really fast. Like if I'm just going frame by frame, it's popping to a different position each frame. So our amount of animation is just too high right now. So for that, we're gonna need another new node that we haven't touched yet, but is a really handy one to have. And that is the math node. And the math node does just what it says. It does math and it does math so you don't have to. And what we're going to do is 
come over to it and take a look. We've got a reel coming out of our tank bot mover and we're gonna want a reel going in. So our data type right now is real, but you can change this over to vectors or normals or all sorts of things. But right now we're good with real. And we're gonna to want to slow down the animation, so we're gonna to want to divide it. So if I take the Z position and put it into the input of one, we're now gonna to need to add a second number. And we can do it two ways. We can either add it right here on the node, or what I like to do is add a constant and the constant is just kind of the same thing. It's going to allow me to define the type, which is real, and define a value. So I'm dividing here, and let's divide by 100. And let's go ahead and see what kind of offset that's gonna give us. I'm gonna come here and grab a result node. And all the result node does is give us the result. It's just gonna tell us what our calculation is. So right now it's at 10, and if I scrub through the time a little bit, we can see how much it's offsetting. And we can see that we're getting, you know, a little bit of offset per, and maybe 100 was a good number. So let's go ahead and plug it in to our offsets, and let's bring it back and take a look. And that's looking better. That actually may be pretty close. Yeah, it's probably still just a little too fast. And let's try 200. And we'll back him up a little bit and let him play. That looks a little better. Probably still just a little faster than I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna go to 300. And we'll try that again. That looks better to me. That definitely looks better. But let's go ahead and take a look from, let's see, 127. Let's just do a preview here real quick. can go ahead and play our animation and yeah those tank treads are looking about right to me but the beautiful thing is if you feel they need to be faster or slower you can just keep changing that number up and if we wanted to do something special to handle rotation on it because when you rotate tank treads when you rotate, the tank tread should still be moving. Right now you can see because they're not getting a Z position, they're not moving. And that would be an extra easy thing to add as well, just to give you a little bit of extra animation options. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add another math. And we're gonna come in here and we're gonna add the coordinate global rotation H. And we're gonna go ahead and let's move this one up here so those two are together. And we'll copy and paste a constant here. And for right now, we'll just go ahead and put this straight through because I'm not sure how much we're gonna need to do if we're gonna need to add to it, divide it, or what. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more math here. And that is just gonna to be to add these two together. So whether it's moving in Z or moving in H, they will add up together to give us our offset. So I'm gonna put that here, put that here. I'm gonna leave this at add, and I'm gonna put the output out to my treads. So if I turn it, There you go, you can see them moving, but again, they're moving really, 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 really fast. Probably much faster than we're gonna need. So that's gonna tell me I need to do another divide. And I'm gonna add in that reel again, and let's just start off with 300 and see how that works. 
Now 300 is too much. You can see they're moving, but they're moving very, very slowly. So let's go ahead and maybe go something like 50. No, nope, no, nope, that's not it either. They're still moving very, 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 very slow. So let's try something like five. Again, this is all just trial and error till we find the number we like. There we go. That's looking pretty good. That looks like they're moving correctly. Or at least moving at a good speed to me. Again, this is, uh, this is a little subjective, so pick a number that you think works well for you. And that gives us an extra animation option. And it's one that we don't have to send any keyframes for. It's only going to do that animation as it's either turning or moving in the axes that we've defined. So the last thing we need to do to complete our shot is add in a camera move. So I'm going to make a target camera and I'm going to go ahead and go back to zero. I'm going to drop my target underneath my tank pot mover because that way my target will always follow the object I want to see. And I'll go ahead and look through my camera and I'm going to come down to the camera object. I'm going to make it a nice wide camera so it's big and dramatic. I'm going to position it down here and I'm going to set a keyframe at the beginning and here at the end I'm going to want a nice low angle, make the tank bot look heroic. There we go. Now if I come back, maybe somewhere here in the middle, I'll just swing my camera around. So it comes over, follows it up, and to the top. And if we look at our timeline, We've done all of that with three keyframes, which makes animation really quick and easy. It allows us to do revisions really, really fast. And any changes that come down the pipe, you can handle, turn around, and look like a hero. And it's all with a very simple Espresso setup. And that is just one of the uses of the ray collision and the math nodes here in Espresso. So I think we're here at the end of our tutorial. And I hope you've learned something that you can use in your work. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or in the comments, or you can use Sherlock's Homeless Network. I hear that is excellent. And if you wanna keep learning, we have more great tutorials and assets for you to use in your work at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.